And I'm not saying that with content creation, it's going to take you five years to grow. It won't. If you nail content creation, like I helped one of my one of my clients, I helped him launch his first business and did about four months of strategizing and he cleared 95K organically month one. So you can do this really well without a following. In the first six months of me growing my TikTok, I made like a quarter million dollars with a link in bio that said, apply to work with me one-on-one. And I use that application to financially qualify people. I'd get on one sales call with them and I'd do a four-figure close. And I mean, it was just bang, bang, bang. bang. I was I was shocked. TikTok was an amazing revenue generator. And the reason why I want to make a heavier focus into YouTube and why I think people should is because our middle of funnel data is showing that we, we send somebody to a YouTube video, we get 50 to 75% watch times, even on an hour long video. So people are like sitting there, they're engaged, they're watching me speak a ton for very long periods of time. And then we get a ton of conversions at that middle of funnel step. They're going directly from a YouTube video to making a purchase. So the intent mm-hmm. to buy is just astronomical on YouTube. So again, if I could go back in time, I would heavily utilize YouTube. If you want to build a legitimate, profitable online business without shiny objects, without the hypey gimmicks, and without the stress and overwhelm, if you want to make more money without having to be present online all day, every day, pumping out content that nobody sees and hustling DMs to generate leads and sales, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the Digital Trailblazer Podcast, your online business university, where you'll learn how ordinary people start from ground zero with no influence, no email list or audience to sell to, and no business or marketing experience, and go from working nine to five jobs to building successful six and seven figure online businesses and all the steps in between. Learn the strategies that worked and what didn't, learn the mistakes that they made and how to avoid them, and then learn their plans for scaling their businesses and taking things to the next level all so that you can build your business faster and easier and make more money without sacrificing the things that are important to you in your life. I'm your host, Leah Ray Getz, and with me is my husband, Todd. Now let's get to it with today's guest. Welcome, Digital Trailblazers. I'm super excited to have with us Justin Nault. He has done amazing things, specifically with organic marketing. He's been able to build first just a seven-figure supplement company, completely organic, gone on to have an eight-figure Amazon brand, And now in coaching, seven figures in coaching, virtually almost all of that uh, in coaching even up until recently has been all organic as well. So he is crushing it when it comes to organic marketing and he's here to spill the beans and to give us all the good stuff. So welcome, Justin. We are super excited to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yay, welcome. So um, give a little context of like what you do and then we can get into the nitty gritty of content creation and uh, organic funnels and all that. Sure. Yeah, I would say first and foremost, I would be called an influencer because everything that I built is around my organic influencer ness, we'll call it right, is like the following that I have on all these platforms. Um, Very big following on TikTok, pretty well on Instagram, very big Facebook following and private Facebook groups, which have actually been amazing revenue generators. Um, At one time, 85% of my supplement sales were coming from a Facebook group. It was like really powerful. Um, So basically, I do a lot of organic content creation. And I do that. and, And then I, I, funnel that into whatever form of monetization I'm trying to do. So if I'm trying to build enterprise value, I'm driving toward physical products. If I'm trying to build cash flow, I'm driving towards info products and high ticket coaching group, like one to many and one to one coaching products. Okay, that's awesome. So what is your specialty? So people get like, what are you an influencer of? Yeah, so it's so interesting because this is actually, um, I made a lot of masterminds. Uh, We were talking about internet marketing party that I was at last night with some friends. Um, Mm -hmm. But Generally speaking, if you find me on podcasts or social media, I will be talking about the niche that I grew my audience with, which is metabolic health. So basically, I call Clovis, which is my first company, the anti-diet and the anti-stress diet. I think the whole world is in this crazy restriction, fasting, stressful diet culture, eat less and get healthy. And I fundamentally disagree with that. So I call it the anti-diet program, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I built. My 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 whole influencer strategy was around metabolic coaching. And now... When I work with clients for entrepreneurship, I try to help them do the same thing, right? What is your area of expertise? How far can we niche it down? And then what pain points can we speak to that will in some way, shape or form be a bit controversial compared to what everyone else has heard, right? So my tagline for the way that I grew my brand is how to lose weight by eating more and exercise less, which we just hammer that pain point home. And it's it's been phenomenal. It's just a really, really powerful to speak to pain points in that way. So I've built everything, the podcast, my supplement companies, my coaching, everything is built on 
healing people's metabolisms and helping them see that the very diets they've been following for decades are what cause the metabolic damage that they're dealing with. And there's only one way out. Mm, interesting. Okay. Awesome. So let's dive in. People struggle like organic content. Obviously organic followers is wonderful. People, it's like this pie in the sky. People want this massive following organically and they've been posting forever and nothing's ever happening. Mm -hmm. So how do we actually post or what kind of content do we need to create? How do we create it to actually build a substantial following that we can actually move into making purchases, you know, generating leads, all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, the first thing is the content itself, right? Is like video is king. And I know there are people doing faceless brands and there are all these things going on with marketing. But like, if you really want to build a brand that you can have longevity with, you got to put your face in front of a camera. And I have a bit of an unfair advantage with that because I had a 15 year music career and I was doing over 300 shows a year. I was living in Nashville. I was on ABC. I had a reality TV show by age 25. I had a YouTube channel. So I mean, like my 10,000 hours of like what we would call on stage time or screen time, like I crossed 10,000 hours when I was 20 years old and I'm 38. You know, so when I transitioned into video, it was very easy for me. So that's the one thing I would say that I don't think people do enough of is one, the bicep curl of content creation. If you can shift out of the mindset of how many views is this going to do and you can just take it as training, like you're a white belt in jujitsu, you're going to get choked out every day for the first five years, you know? And I'm not saying that with content creation, it's going to take you five years to grow. It won't. If you nail content creation, like I helped one of my, one of my clients, I helped him launch his first business and did about four months of strategizing and he cleared 95K organically month one. So you can do this really well without a following, but at some point you're going to have to just take it as like, you know, skill stacking, learning different skills, like release a podcast and do a podcast episode every single day and don't care if it has three listeners because you're just getting in front of a microphone and you're doing the thing. Post the videos that you think suck. It doesn't matter. Like get eyeballs on you. You can always pivot the brand and the messaging and go wherever you want to go. Like right now I have 400,000 followers on TikTok. That's my audience. I can pivot in anything I want right now. I may lose some of those followers, but I still have a lot of eyeballs because I just did the thing. And, you know, Gary Vee is, is very famous for this, you know, for whether whether you love him or hate him in terms of marketing, he he tends to sort of fail at teaching beginners how to shift into monetizing. That was a mistake I did in the beginning. I made a ton of content. I was working like 16 hour days, tons of content, did over four, like over 300 podcast episodes. I went live once a week in Facebook for 115 weeks straight. And I and I couldn't figure out how to switch the monetization switch like how to turn that on I was making a yeah. ton of free content because gary v said jab 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 right hook you know so but he is great to listen to in terms of just getting started creating content flexing the muscle of content and making the success marker am i making a lot of content because you're going to be getting better and then you can go out and take an online course on like charisma right like a charisma coach or an online course or something like that and just get comfortable with video because video is king and it's not going anywhere absolutely so if you were to start over today what would be the platform that you would start with? TikTok for eyeballs. So I would grow my audience on TikTok and then I would focus very heavily, which I've not done a lot of and I'm shifting into more just because the data is there, long form YouTube for sales. So there are people, you know, I met an influencer the other day who had 2000 subscribers on YouTube and his average view count was 200 views per video and he was closing $30,000 a month organically. Mm -hmm. The quality of lead and the dollar per view on YouTube is just better than anywhere else. But because of the way the algorithms work, TikTok is the biggest organic social media opportunity that's ever existed because most of the eyeballs they put you in front of are not your followers. It's different than every other platform in that way. You know, so it's like I very regularly can spit out you know, some videos on TikTok with 6 million views, some with 4 million views, some with a million views. I can pretty much know before I post the video, like, is this going to do a million views? Because it's just putting you in front of so many eyeballs. So I would, I would probably say a combination, but like you need to do short form video content and I highly recommend TikTok for the most eyeballs. Okay. Yeah, I think you're, you're the second or third person that's told us now about TikTok, about how when you create a new video, more than any other platform, it's showing it to new people rather than to your own followers. And that and that's really one of the keys to to growing, right? Is, is you need to get in front of new people. So that makes sense that we do that. So are you taking those, are you somehow getting those TikTok followers to follow you on YouTube as well? Or or is that a completely different audience? Or do you, are you connecting the two? Yeah, in a way. So that's, that's not what I did. But if I were to start over today, it's exactly what I would do, right? Okay. So what I have done with TikTok is 
in my, I mean, in, with YouTube is my middle of funnel marketing is almost exclusively sending to long form YouTube videos. And the reason why I want to make a heavier focus into YouTube and why I think people should is because our middle of funnel data is showing that we, we send somebody to a YouTube video, we get 50 to 75% watch times, even on an hour long video. So people are like sitting there, they're engaged, they're watching me speak a ton for very long periods of time. And then we get a ton of conversions at that middle of funnel step. They're going directly from a YouTube video to making a purchase. So the intent mm -hmm. to buy is just astronomical on YouTube. So again, if I could go back in time, I would heavily utilize YouTube. And I mean, I put no effort into YouTube and I have 4.2 thousand subscribers and like a lot of views and stuff, but it's just because my platforms are so big everywhere else that people just kind of end up there. Mm -hmm. But I would put heavier focus on YouTube if I were starting over today. Now with TikTok, like in the beginning, so many people told me you can't make big money on TikTok. Like TikTok is for selling $20 products, drop shipping and Timu type stuff, you know? And we went into TikTok heavy and my fiance is a brilliant consumer psychologist and she was a amazing founder of a beauty brand and everything. And so she helped me a lot with the strategy. And what we found is, I mean, I think in the first six months of me growing my TikTok, I made like a quarter million dollars with a link in bio that said, apply to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And I use that application to financially qualify people. I'd get on one sales call with them and I'd do a four figure close. And I mean, it was just bang, bang, bang. bang. I was, I was shocked. TikTok was an amazing revenue generator. That's awesome. Okay. So how do we list all the newbies getting started here? They haven't done anything on TikTok. How do they get to that stage? Walk us through like content creation or strategy to really build their, uh, their TikTok up and be able to generate those kind of leads that they can bring into either a course or a high ticket um, sales call. Sure. I'll start high level and then I'll break down in the nitty gritty details because I told you guys there's some <laughs> softwares that I love that make things much easier. But we always say that with this one talking to new entrepreneurs, do not reinvent the wheel. Another thing that is insane about TikTok is the TikTok ads platform. You know, Facebook has like an ads library. You can go scope people's ads. Yeah. The analytics that TikTok gives you is insane. And like just for fun as an entrepreneur, sign up for a TikTok account, like sign up for a, for a seller account as if you were going to do a TikTok shop. And then you can go to find creators and you can find all these creators and you can sort by their average monthly revenue. So I was in there yesterday. I found this, this woman that like in the last 30 days, she'd done $1.7 million in sales on beauty products on TikTok shop. And then it shows you, here's the top performing videos, right? Wow. So you, you can find these unbelievably successful entrepreneurs. It breaks down their demographic, how many buyers were male, how many were female. So I always say when you're getting started, do not reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of people that are going to, they'll, they'll hear Gary Vee's stuff and say, content doesn't matter. Like it's not the quality, just get the reps in. Yes, you want to get the reps in, but it's going to take you a lot longer if you're doing selfie videos and you're just talking and you're saying like, um, this, that, like I told you guys before we started the difference between views and not views and followers and not followers, it could be 0.1 seconds between the words that you speak. You have to understand the native language of the platform. So you need like quick cuts, you need these things to happen. So you don't want to just stand there and talk in front of a screen and just blah, 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 blah. What you want to do is use the insights and analytics that TikTok gives you to explore the top performers and understand how the scripts are working. Like these top 10 videos on TikTok, what do the hooks have in common? Or you can just take that entire script, right? I have a video that did 6 million views that is like three signs you have a damaged metabolism. You can apply that hook to any niche that you're running. You guys could say three signs your funnel is failing. Are you a digital marketer? Three common mistakes we see with funnels, right? It's the same thing, like understanding how the hook works. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're getting started, don't try to guess at what's going to work. Go find people that are crushing it and mimic their content. And you're not directly stealing it. You're just, you're taking a look at the structure. How does the structure work? What's mm -hmm. the body? Is it a hook and then a promise? If you watch to the end, you will learn this. Is there a call to action at the end? Are they telling people to comment? Are they telling people to check the link in their bio, right? Like TikTok does not like when you say link in bio. Little things like that that you can learn from these top performers don't reinvent the wheel. And then when it comes to like people that don't have a lot of on stage experience or video experience, something like that, one of the best softwares I've I've learned, a lot of people use this for podcasting and stuff, is Descript. Mm -hmm. With Descript, I mean it's amazing. I will set up on a tripod and I can set my phone up and I can say three signs you have a damage of a tablet. Uh, um, three signs you have a damage. Ah, I did it again. Okay, cool. Resigns you have a damaged metabolism, right? And I'll have a 10 minute video where it's, I'm just going one take the whole thing. I don't have to turn the camera off. I don't have to edit multiple clips and videos. You load it into Descript and Descript has something called, it's like Overlord AI. It's like a really funny name. And you can say, remove retakes. 
and it will chop the whole video up. It will only give you your best performer of each line. And then you can remove space between words. So I will clip it and say, I don't want any space between any words that's more than 0.1 seconds. And then it goes, oh. there's 60 spaces that are more than 0.1 seconds. And I go, delete all, click. And then I look at this video and it's like, three signs you have a damaged metabolism. Number one, you're not hungry when you wake up. Number two, you sleep, whatever it is, right? And the video is like, perfect. It's there for you and it takes 90 seconds. It's wow. the best thing I've ever found. And then you export it to your phone and you're done. And another thing I'll have people do is like for SEO reasons, just export the transcript of the video into script and that's your video caption. You don't need to come up with a fancy video caption every time you're sitting there. What do I say? What do I say? Like literally take the transcript, put it in your caption and it will work well for SEO reasons. And then there's one other piece of software I can dig into. I'll pause there to see how you guys are feeling about that. And then we can talk about the actual posting strategy. But that's that's what I would do as a, big, as a beginner. Yeah, I didn't know Descript could do all those things. I first downloaded it years ago when it first came out and it, did, it didn't have all those features. And back then I thought it was pretty cool too, but it was like, I was already pretty invested in Adobe Premiere and, and that's mm -hmm. you know, where we do all of our editing and all that. But just knowing... Like when I create a video for a course or something like that, and, and I'm manually doing all those things, I'm, I'm cutting out the retakes. Anytime there's a long pause, I'm cutting those out. And I think on a recent video, if I remember right, I had like a 30 minute long video. The original recording was maybe 45, 50 minutes. And I look at the number of cuts there and it's like I, almost a thousand cuts. And it's like, mm. yeah, the, the, well, it's no wonder that took me, you know, two days to edit. Right? Exactly. I used and to do the same thing. Yeah, and Descript can do that in a matter of seconds. <laughs> wow. You just saved us a lot of money, I'm just going to say, in his time. Let's just... Money <laughs> and time. And here's another thing. This is an interesting one. I did a podcast with Paul Check. I, I speak a lot on spirituality and personal development and all of these things. And Paul Check is really not happy about some healthcare things that went down from the year 2020 to 2023, right? And all the medical wonder what that was. And needles and all these things, right? And there's all these words you can't say. And I put this on YouTube and was immediately flag got like a very serious flag and a suspension. And I'd never experienced that before. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, how do I fix this? So I went to ChatGPT and I was like, I uploaded the whole transcript and was like, what went wrong here for YouTube violations? And ChatGPT is like this, 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 this. So then I pull it into Descript and I find the words that ChatGPT wrote to me and I click find in Descript and it highlights it. And you can actually edit the video with the script. So if it says like this word, the government doesn't want you to say, I just highlight it, delete. It deletes that entire clip of the video. So I took all of the things that could potentially have a violation, went into Descript, deleted all those words in the video, exported it, uploaded it to YouTube. Totally fine. It's up there right now. It's a two and a half hour interview. Like, can you imagine if I had to scour a two and a half hour interview for every little word? You know what I mean? Right, right. Can't it also replace words too? Like if you, if, instead of just deleting it out, if you were to... Um, instead of saying, like, for example, well, you can don't say it because yeah. it's going to go. Oh, on so right. <laughs> like, say XYZ word and then yeah, replace it with XYZ, yeah. XYZ vaccine versus the jab or, you know, whatever else. You, you can right. replace that and it would actually change the, the, the audio for it too. And it would do it in your voice. Does it do that too? 100%. Yeah. It learns your voice. You can do like AI voiceover. I mean, another thing too, what you can, if you want to be funny about it, you can just like put a car honking or something. They have like a whole database, like animations and like little audio clips and stuff. You can make a whoopee cushion, you know, whatever you want to do, but you can find it very easily and, and correct these issues that are, I mean, they're serious. Like what, when my account's suspended for five days and I can't make any content, like that's a real problem, you know? Yeah. I love that. That's, that's, that's a massive gold nugget. So, and what was the, just repeat for everybody, the, um, the seconds, the, per word or separation. Per yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, dis so Descript has, when you log in, it, it's a little mm -hmm. picture of a robot and I think it's called overlord.ai. It's a hilarious name. And you click it, it'll show you all the things you could do. So it can also do like studio quality sound. If you have a, a poor quality microphone, it will make the, the audio better. But all the things you'll see there, one is remove filler words. It will remove um, like, so, right? Then you can click remove retakes, which is what I kind of act it out for you guys here it'll get this this was the best hook and it'll delete all the other ones right and the the main feature i told you guys about is remove space between words so you can say any space you find i actually choose 0 0.1 seconds which is very very quick so you'll see if you go to my talking head videos on tiktok it's like clip 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 clip, 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 clip and it just keeps your attention that's very native to tiktok i see new tiktokers 
that are doing a one take video that's a minute long. And they're like, my name is Sarah. I teach people <laughs> how and their viewer is gone. No one's watching that. So do you have a specific formula on the types of con like do you have like a different types of content that you're doing on on TikTok? Is it all basically the same sort of format with different topics? Like what does that uh, look like? Yeah, again, for me, it's it's what I'm doing now versus if I could go back and start over, right? If, if I could start over, I'd probably diversify a little bit, but I really just was, I was trying to see how fast we could grow. And we grew to 400,000 in like right around a year. It was very, very fast. And we just had this winning formula. So we just kept spitting out this winning formula. But for me, it's almost always the same. It's me in my living room, about the frame that you see right now, vertical. It's kind of like from my chest up. Sometimes I'm sitting in a chair, full body, and it's just talking head videos. It's me with a super catchy hook, and the one thing I will say is my page gives a lot of valuable information. Like if you could go through all my videos, you could learn like if I do these five things every day, I will completely transform my health. Like I know the habits that I need to do. I know what foods to eat, all these things. Then we can talk about lead mag magnets and stuff like that for the funnels. But um, I definitely give a lot of value. But the production quality, I mean, it's an iPhone. It's me in my living room. Like a lot of the times I'm literally in sweatpants. I'm like, hey, what's up? I guess, you know what I mean? It's just quick. I just spit it out. That's awesome. How many... What's the frequency? Once per day. And I've tested with a lot of different things. Like you can definitely drive growth a little faster if you're willing to do like four to six times per day. But like mm. the difference between one per day and two per day is virtually nothing. So for me, really? I'm pretty consistently once per day has been almost the entire growth strategy. We have had some little sprints where we'll do, you know, four videos a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what I found with frequency, Instagram is more of a, a frequency type situation where like if you can post six times a day on Instagram, like you'll probably gain several thousand follower followers like in a week. It's it's very fast, but it's a lot of output. It's it's challenging. Yeah. Interesting. Do you like to batch content or just do it per day? Well for me, and again, this is kind of the the advantage that I have of being an on stage performer. Most of what I do is a one take. So if I were if it was taking me a really a long time to do these videos, I would probably batch. So I think that's going to be individualized to the person. But for me, like I said, like from scripting to filming to posting on TikTok for me was like less than 25 minutes a day. It was like we can I can do it very, very fast. So I tended to do it every day. And then if I had a trip coming up or something like I just went to Burning Man. Right. So like I, I preloaded content and was ready for that stuff to go. You know. So if you're taking 25 minutes to create the content, are you researching ahead of time before you, are you like there's I've heard all kinds of theories about TikTok right? Where you should watch a bunch of videos before or after you post yours that have similar hashtags or similar topics and then engage and do, and do you bother with any of that? Or would you advise a new person to do that? Or can you really just drop and go? A couple of things that are interesting, right? Some of these little mm -hmm. tips and tricks, it's always going to be like an N equals one. People will say this happened for me and then someone else tests right. it and they're like, I had a different experience. I don't do any of that, like watching other videos or commenting or things like that. What I do is I make sure that within the first few hours of that video going up, I respond to every single comment. And I will try to make those comments very engaging or I may ask questions. So the user comes back and asks me another question, right? And I'm trying to get as many contents go as many um, comments going as possible. And a lot of times what I was doing in my main area of growth was I would make the top comments, I'd post the video. And I make a comment that's like how to lose weight by eating more and exercising less resources. Then I would reply to my own comment. So it'd be like a little drop down thread and, you know, go here for my free masterclass. Then I reply to that reply. So it's kind of you have like almost like a little X like Twitter thread of these mm -hmm. little comments so people know where to go to find stuff. And once you post the video after like a couple minutes after the video is posted, I don't know why this is, but TikTok loves you for it. Literally hard close the app on your phone and just walk away and give it an hour or two. I don't know why we my my fiance found this in a Reddit forum and it's like you if you leave the app open you get like punished for it. It's very strange. So post, yeah, do those initial comments immediately if you're going to do those. Yep. And then hard stop the app. Yep, and you can have the app open and let let your video run maybe five six times like like your mm -hmm. and then just close the app and come back you know two hours later see what comments are there and def definitely respond to those comments especially within the first twenty four hours like hit every comment. Mm -hmm. And like, like the user's comment because that's engagement. Reply to the user's comment because that's and get like other people's replies. Like just, just get engagement going in the comments. They, the algorithm really cares about that. What are your thoughts on viral music or audio added to talking head videos? It can certainly be helpful for me personally. I've not dialed the very best way to do that. 
I know that there are trending audios and mm -hmm. my data is kind of all over the place, right? Like there was one time I posted a clip on Instagram and I put, I added some audio and I thought I adjusted the volume correctly. And it turned out the audio was like louder than my voice. You could still hear my voice, but the audio was like kind of drowning it out. And it did like 4 million views. And I was like, I would have never done that on purpose. That was an accident that happened. So like the audio stuff, I've not fully figured out. I have viral videos that have done millions of views that have audio. The vast majority of the TikToks I've done don't have background audio or music. So I, I can't say that I'm like an expert in that, but it's been weirdly hit or miss. Like sometimes it crushes for you and sometimes it doesn't. I find this very interesting. So I, I feel like some of the stuff that I've gotten sucked into that just takes forever that it's like, and I'm an hour in and I, I'm I, like, I was able to, I had an hour's worth of time and I got one stupid yeah. TikTok posted and that right. we're talking head, simple thing. Whereas if we just focus on the hook um, and then editing it to be punchy, like you talked about with Descript, yeah. that it would save way more time. Well, here's the thing. Like the majority of what I do would really probably be considered life coaching. And the mm -hmm. core thing that I teach to all humans is how you do something is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So I want, I'm just going to give you this example for all the entrepreneurs out there who are like, how do I get started? And they're worried about the audio in the background, right? It's like, I have people that come to me that are 300 pounds. Their ideal body weight is 150 pounds. And they're like, should I be taking ashwagandha? How many net carbs should I have? When should I stop eating in the evening? What should my fasting window be? Should I get a red light therapy device for $10,000? And I'm like, how many calories did you eat yesterday? And they're like, I don't know. Okay. How much protein did you get yesterday? I don't know. Have you ever tried calories? No. And they're like, I've tried every diet under the sun. I'm like, you have? What were those diets like? Like, what were your macros like? I've never tracked macros. Okay. What diet did you have? Well, I kind of like stopped eating bread once. And I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah, I did keto. I'm like, okay, that's not keto. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're, they're optimizing for the last 5%. They're, they're operating like right. a biohacker without understanding that like, you know, a buddy of mine, like Ben Greenfield, like the king of biohackers, right, is like, this guy is so dialed that the last 5% of like what supplement he takes to place first in the triathlon he's running, like he's there. But if you're 300 pounds, it's like, are you drinking water? Are you eating enough food? Are you going outside and getting the sun on your skin? Have you gone for a walk in the last two weeks? So with new creators, I really wouldn't get upset, even like the closing the app or like, you know, what audio to use or whatever like that. It's 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 a form of self-sabotage. Like mm -hmm. in, in one of my videos, in my online course for metabolism, I have a, a video called self-sabotage, the pattern within the pattern. And the number one pattern of self-sabotage that I outline in that video is the perfectionist. The perfectionist mm -hmm. totally full of I don't know if I can use profanity on your show, but they're full of it. It's just yeah reasons to not get started. Absolutely. You are more than welcome to use profanity. We just bleep it out. Okay. <laughs> I'll flow more naturally because I'm that guy. <laughs> so with all of the uh, commenting and replying to comments and things like that, and you got to do that for 24 hours, it, it seems like you might be kind of glued to your phone doing that. Uh, and I, from our previous conversation, I think you mentioned something about automation tools that might help with that. Have you, Can you talk about that at all? Sure. Yeah, I use a system called make.com. Uh, make and make.com integrates with open AI and I mean, Instagram, Facebook, like basically everything. Make.com is crazy. Um, but I actually did use a freelancer to help me with this because it can get quite confusing. But you can create a make.com bot that auto replies to Facebook comments and Instagram comments in your voice. The one thing you want to be careful of is like you really need to train the AI well, or it will just use language that you won't. With, with me, it would be like, thank you for sharing your wondrous journey that you've embarked on for health and wellness. I'm like, I would never say that, right? So I had to train the AI pretty well. And the other thing you'll want to do is put a delay because your users are going to notice if they post a comment and a millisecond later they have a reply and it's a long reply, like, wait a second. And, it, and keep in mind, like the way this thing is set up, it's going to reply to every comment and it's going to reply to everyone's reply to other comments. So if someone comments and then another user responds, the AI is going to respond to the original comment and to that person's response. So the engagement is fantastic. And as I shared with you guys offline is like, I ended up getting all these notifications that were like 3000 people liked your comment. That was a comment from the bot because the bot is cool, calm and collected and has no emotion, especially in the health and wellness space where there's a lot of hate and a lot of trolls and a lot of really nasty things are said. So that was pretty cool. But then I, I don't know how long this is going to last or how you want to work around it because as AI grows, 
things are happening that the platforms don't have control over and then they figure it out. So for instance, like my bot, my Instagram, I was basically just told like, hey, there are some automations running on your system that we think violate terms. I didn't get like a, there was no suspension, no anything like that. It just gave me this like notice. So I disabled the bot and we'll see if there's anything that I can do around that in the future. Um, but the one thing I know for first time posters that I think will be great is we really have reached a point in social media where the content creation is astounding. There's so much content going out there's so much consumption happening. And I still think a lot of people will come out and they'll choose one platform. We're like my buddy, Chris Williamson, like he just was like podcast, right? And YouTube, like he just did that thing. We're like, he's not worried about TikTok or anything like that. <laughs> and I think years back, it was easier to be a single channel influencer. Yeah. To some degree today, you're kind of expected to be everywhere, at least in some degree. Mm -hmm. So one of the most fantastic tools I found for this I actually made a URL for it because I became an affiliate for them but it's just justinault.com slash repurpose and this is a, a software called repurpose and what repurpose does is it links all your accounts and I can also tell you guys here that the three platforms that really will punish you for using third-party apps is Instagram YouTube and TikTok so every day I post to TikTok Instagram and YouTube manually it takes me about 10 minutes and then it's pushing out to X, it's pushing to LinkedIn, it pushes out to my Snapchat, it pushes out to Pinterest, it pushes out everywhere. So all the content that I'm doing, I'm omni-channel at all times with about 10 minutes of posting per day. When I teach entrepreneurs, like this is part of the, the programs that I have teaching people how to get to their first $10,000 a month organically. I teach them how to use these systems. I have Loom videos of exactly how I use them so they can kind of copy my templates. Same thing with GPTs and viral hooks and you know, creating viral hooks and creating amazing scripts and all these things. I've actually trained GPTs on everything that I'm doing. And when people hire me for coaching, how to build their business, I give them access to all these tools I've created. But repurpose, they can do completely on their own. You just kind of have to learn the system. And it's easy because yeah. icons, it'll say like TikTok arrow to, you know, LinkedIn. It's like, it's going to pull your TikTok and it's going to push it to LinkedIn. And it does it all without watermarks, which is amazing. Mm. That's important. Right. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. I think with any of those automation tools or, you know, especially with the bots, because uh, that's, I mean, we've been using bots since 2015, 2016. And this was, you know, in the days of Mass Planner and Jarvee and things like that. It's, it's social media is always changing and they're always looking for ways to eliminate the bots because there's uh, inevitably people abuse them. If people didn't abuse them, then sure, they, I think social media would be fine with them. But it, when it gets to the point where, where it's abuse, then yeah, they, they look at ways of identifying it and shutting it down. So yeah, yeah it's nice. But like you said, I think it's, that's one of those things that's like the top, you know, 0.5%. Right. Like you should, you yeah. should have all the other, don't rely on a bot to build your business. If you don't have the other 95, you know, 99.5% of your business going. That's so, a good point, man. Like I, I never played with automations until I had over 400,000 TikTok followers. I had over 50,000 Instagram followers, right? It was, it really was a point where, like you said, like you reach a following where you actually can't respond to all the comments, right? Like yeah. in the first 24 hours, I can respond to all the comments. But if I have a 6 million view TikTok, it's going to have 2,500 comments. I am I can't dedicate my life to replying to all those things, right? So the bots can help, but you have to weigh the risk versus reward too. Like I built my brand organically, right? So these people, like my clients, I know their kids' names. There are people with Clovis tattoos on their skin, literally. I have brand tattoos on human beings, right? So it's I've built authenticity into this thing. And then someone uh, sent a screenshot to me the other day, and it was my Instagram had done this response that was like please respond to comments in justin nault's voice use an authentic empathetic tone. and i was like what it responded with the prompt that i gave and i was like oh. and luckily like this person is they're a fan of mine and they're a friend slash like client and we're just like i don't know about this one man i was like wow where did that come right there's always going to be little trip ups as you use that might drive engagement too though <laughs> yeah i know right they're like wait a second you know <laughs> it happens, you know yeah that's awesome so Okay, we're going to talk quite a bit about content, and I love all this big, massive gold nuggets. I, now, how do we move them? What's your advice on taking those massive organic followers and converting them? I've heard pros and cons about the whole link tree concept or having one funnel, one place. Um, kind of break that down for us, because I know there's a lot of people out there who are in the weeds, they're creating content. Maybe they've built a following, but they're still not getting them to do anything from there. Well, the biggest thing is, what are you comfortable doing? 
right? It's like, if you want to coach one, I think we've reached a pretty crazy saturation level with coaches. And there are a lot of coaches that are teaching things they haven't actually done. So <laughs> you need to, you know, understand that you don't just jump into coaching because if you're not able to get people the transformation that you're promising or the results you're promising, if you're, te I'll teach you to get $10,000 and then someone's six months into your program and they've not made a dollar, like this is not going to go well for you. So in the meantime, I think that people can actually do a lot with low ticket offers. Um, so I have one funnel right now that's uh, what would be called a tripwire funnel, I guess, or an ascension funnel. So it's a $3 lead magnet. There is an order bump. And then after the order bump, there's an OTO. And if they don't take the OTO, there's a down sell. If they do take the OTO, they then go to checkout. And the whole backend system is a four ninety seven offer. And it's a 45-day email backend that's just do this thing, do this thing, do this thing, do this thing. You can make a great living with that, right? It's not hard to replace a $10,000 a month income when you're selling 25 courses per month, right? Especially if you're good at driving organic traffic. That's 25 people per month is, is a grain of sand in the beach that is my following. You know what I mean? So you can do a lot with low ticket. I would just really, this is a very individualized thing. You know, it's like, yes, selling a four-figure coaching package is like really, really powerful, right? I have five-figure coaching packages as well that do great. And I sell less of them and I'm very selective because it's more hands-on and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you have to ask yourself, like, what is your superpower? And this is where we go to the personal development side, like to kind of do an aside, like, there's a great book from years ago that I did called Unique Ability 2.0. It's excellent. Like I would really, and it, it has you ask your friends and family and the people closest to you and stuff, like really dial in on what you're really good at and then figure out how you can either create a course out of it or PDFs or audiobooks or a full online course. And if it's something that you can coach or if it's something that you can group coach, right? And that's what we do when we're working with entrepreneurs. It's like, that's why we want to get really clear about at a niche I was talking to, um, you know, an internet marketing party with Eddie Malouf, who's a fantastic digital marketer. And he gave me this great analogy because he, he buys, you know, kind of, kind of Cody Sanchez style. He buys boring businesses and he buys like franchises. And he was talking to me about massage parlors. He was like, a massage parlor on average does about 8,000 a month in profit. A lymphatic drainage massage parlor does about $30,000 per month in profit. It's that different when you can niche down. So that's really what you want to do is identify a niche and then figure out what is the price point for what you're comfortable teaching. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do, let's say, like a seven video online course or something, and that's it, and it's passive and there's no coaching, or whatever, that's great. That's cool if you don't want to do the coaching part of it, but you're not going to get five grand for that product. It's very unlikely that you get five grand for that product, which is why, and my fiance is a magician at this, is she's showing people math. Hey, if you have a $400 product, you sell 25 of them, you make X amount of dollars. Like, how does that feel to you in terms of personal income? So it's identifying a niche that people are going to want to learn. And then you getting really honest with yourself at what you're good at, because you can make a full online course without ever putting your face on camera. You can do a slideshow presentation. You can put text on screen. You know, you can hire an animator to make animations or whatever. So it depends on what you're comfortable with. With me, I've done everything with an online course and even my group coaching package and my private coaching package for the metabolism stuff is it comes with the online course. So there's a custom nutrition plan that's based on a 22 question health assessment. They get their custom nutrition plan. There's 21 video lessons to go through. There's over 20 bonus videos, how to make your own meal plan, recipe books, this whole thing. And then the coaching is on top of that. That's all the personal development. How you do something is how you do everything. Helping people see are you dealing with the bottom 90% or the top 5% self-sabotage patterns and all that. So for me, I, I tend to use a combination of info products plus coaching to get mm -hmm. the highest dollar amounts because having a back end high ticket offer, I mean, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. You just have to be, able to, to be able to deliver on that value. Yeah, absolutely. So are you using call to actions throughout your videos? Is that something you're doing in the, just the comments? Like what is your call to action? Where do you, how do you mix that in? And then is it a link tree set up in your bio or, or how do you get them the, the link? Yeah, what's funny, again, like the this worked for someone and didn't work for the pros and cons. I've used Linktree exclusively and it's been magic. Like I'll sell supplements through Linktree. I, my private coaching application when I was just doing it DMs and me as the only sales guy, that was all Linktree. Right now, the, what would be called a tripwire funnel is built into Linktree. And then the only other thing I do use, I just started using many chat automations. So I have a lead magnet that is a free training video and it's... 20 minute long. I mean, it's essentially a VSL, but it is a masterclass that will teach you a lot about your metabolism. Like it delivers on the promise of like, here is why you can't lose weight. Here's what's up with your metabolism. And then the call to action on that is actually a $3 lead magnet, which has been fantastic. 
Um, so I'm driving them to a VSL. So like my many chat thing will say, comment the word training. So I use an automated commenter. So they comment the word training. The bot then responds and says, thanks so much. Keep an eye on your DMs. And then many chat is sending them a link to that free training video. And the free training them video is pushing them through that ascension funnel, as we call it. And, and what platforms are you using ManyChat on? So just Instagram and Facebook. I, ManyChat, as far as I know, doesn't integrate with TikTok. TikTok doesn't do any automations right now. Um, yeah. So TikTok, I'm always driving people to the link in bio. But here's the trick for TikTok as well. is TikTok, the algorithm doesn't like link in bio. It doesn't like you to text it in the comments. It doesn't like you to say link in bio. Because TikTok, and if you look at what TikTok shop is doing, why TikTok shop is trying to compete with Amazon and something they're doing really well against Instagram and Facebook is you can make a TikTok shop purchase, never leave the platform and go back to scrolling immediately. It doesn't pull you off platform. Facebook ads pull you off Facebook. Instagram ads pull you off Instagram. TikTok does not want you off the platform. So the algorithm is going to punish you when you say link in bio or click here or whatever. So what we do is we take a screenshot of our actual profile and say, if you want to learn more, go here. And we put that screenshot on the camera with a circle that is circling the link in bio. I never say the word link in bio, but they get a picture on screen that is my profile with a big red circle around the link. And they know who here, you know, you, and you kind of have to play that game. That's one that we learned really early on. And it's actually very important. If you're going to do the link in bio game on TikTok, you got to be super careful about it. So Facebook and Instagram, I'm using the comment training below. And this is another thing with the script, right? When I'm filming, I'll do the whole script the same. And then at the end, I'll say, go here to learn more. And then I pause and I say, comment the word training below if you want to learn more. And then I pull it into the script and I just pull those two versions of the video. And one's going to TikTok and one's going to Instagram. Everything else is identical. Does that makes sense? That's awesome. I love it. Did I, did I answer your question? <laughs> I think so. Well, actually, how many, what's your ratio for call to action? Do you have, are you like four out of four videos to one has a call to action or all videos a call to action? Like, what does that look like? Right now, it's it's probably about a, a one to four. I, I still am pretty heavy on the sort of old school Gary Vee model of like jab, 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 right hook. I don't do a ton of direct selling. Um, and it's interesting because another thing Lincoln Bio has been great for is we used to do another thing people can try if they don't want to do like a, a paid funnel is we used to say, I have a foods list, which is a $3 lead magnet right now. And to get the foods list, join my Facebook group. So we direct people to the Facebook group. We'd collect their email in the question at the beginning. So now we have their email lead and then they can download the foods list, right? So we could do that. But I really have done a lot of like, People end up buying from me or finding the links or moving to the things because my content is so good and it speaks to them. There's it's speaking to their pain points dead on. So they're consuming a ton of my content. So I'm kind of counting on like I'll get on sales calls with people and they're like, I've listened to a hundred episodes of your podcast. And I'm like, mm. how did you do that? That's insane. Right. Or people will say, I saw one of your TikTok videos and I went down a TikTok rabbit hole of you. So they've seen two hours of my content. So even if my comment training videos, my call to action videos are one to four, they're going to come across that. They're going to get told to go here or whatever. And it feels a little more authentic to me than every single video, just trying to hit them with like what you're basically saying, give me money, give me money, give me money. And they can feel that. And also this is niche specific. I'm in health and wellness. People are exhausted with being sold health and wellness. I picked one of the most challenging niches ever. And we still pulled it off. So it's the thing. I'm like, if I could go back, maybe I'd choose a different niche. I don't know. <laughs> Do something a little different. So another thing I was wondering about when you're creating your videos, are you doing any like special effect? Like, are you popping words on the screen or pointing and things like that? Or is it just talking head and no, no effects? Mostly talking head, but great question. A little bit of both. There's one I just posted a couple of days ago where the, the hook, trying to remember the year, but the hook is like, if you were born in 1982, you would weigh 27 pounds less. That's a killer hook. If anybody wants to use that, it's going to work for you. It's a great hook, right? And so what I did was I had on screen was an article where the headline was like, would weigh 27 pounds less. And it was talking about just the food industry and ultra processed foods versus more natural foods. And the average weight was XYZ. So when I'm doing that, another thing in health and wellness is you'll get asked to cite studies a lot, right? Like cite your sources. So we put a lot of text on screen for like this study or whatever. And like, we'll, we'll put some stuff up. I would say the majority of videos don't have anything going on. It's kind of like the audio. Like sometimes I use audio and it works really well. Um, or like in the beginning. And I think people should totally do this. If you're in the beginning, you're trying to grow. In the beginning, when I had no followers, I was doing hilarious lip sync videos. And I was making them like, you know, appropriate for health and wellness. Like there was a, a 
a viral one going around when Taylor Swift, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me, when that song came out. And I'm just like, it's me doing this little funny thing. And I was talking about like seed oils. I'm the problem, it's me. There's people are sick because they're consuming seed oils, right? And it got a ton of views or whatever. So I think you should do whatever you can to get those views. But yeah, I mean, it's it's like the audio, it's a little bit of both. Most of my talking head videos don't have pop-ups and then some where I feel it's necessary. Or if I'm talking about client results, I'll always put before and afters. Like you'll see the person who's lost 100 pounds or whatever. But I do it sometimes. So when you're doing that, because I know within TikTok or they, they actually have like the filter or like the green screen type things. And we see that on TikTok that people are doing that sort of thing with like the, the, the I think it's the green screen filter or whatever. Are you doing it all like after recording and you're doing it in um, Descript or something like that? Or are you using those filters in that uh, stuff just directly on your phone? I don't ever use green screen. I don't like the look of it and it's kind of challenging to edit, but I am doing all, Descript is doing all the stuff that I've already told you guys about. Mm -hmm. But any like the captions, text on screen, mm -hmm. if I'm putting pictures up or whatever, I actually do that all natively in TikTok. The TikTok editor is pretty great. Same, the, the yeah. Instagram editor is pretty great. So I'm doing, and the other thing is I find like if I do a screenshot on desktop and like try to use it in script, does it work well? So I do all my screenshots on my phone. If there's a scientific study, I go to PubMed and I take that screenshot, crop it down. So I'm pulling those right out of my photo library and just using the TikTok editor to put them on screen. So it's like my face may be covered for a second while I'm putting up this study that says X, Y, Z, and then it goes away. Gotcha. That yeah. is awesome. Wonderful. This has been such a fun conversation. I feel like we could go for maybe another hour and dive deeper into things. But for sure, yeah. <laughs> We're running out of time, unfortunately. This has been awesome, Justin. So if people want to learn more about you, where should they hit? Yeah, so if people want to check it out, I'll make a custom URL, which is justinalt.com slash digital trailblazer. And they can see what I've done here, right? So they can see what I've built by selecting a niche and turning it into dollars. And then if they want to speak with me more about how to do that or get hands-on training or anything like that, I'm more than happy to teach them how I do this with clients as well. Oh, uh, sorry, one more thing. On social media, if you guys want to find TikTok, Instagram, and everything, I'm at Justin Nault Official on all platforms. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to the Digital Trailblazer podcast. For show notes and information about today's guest, head to digitaltrailblazer.com. Now, if you love this episode, if you got some value, make sure you leave us a review and subscribe. And be sure to share this episode with anyone you know who could use help to build their business. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.